Good evening and a warm welcome. I'm Grihatul Siddiqui and you're watching the explosive weekend debate. Israeli tanks and weapons have been deployed on its border fence with Gaza as the military build-up continues amid relentless bombardment. This even as an estimated 1 million Gazans have been displaced in the first seven days of conflict with Israel. According to aid groups sent by the United Nations Agency supporting Palestinian refugees, the situation in the besieged enclave is catastrophic. How else does one see it? When of the 2,300 Palestinians killed in the Israeli air raids, 724 are children. The number of Israelis killed in Hamas's military operation stands at 1,300, and that includes 286 soldiers. Also, there's been an expanded emergency cabinet that's been convened by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And the word coming out of it is to quote-unquote demolish Hamas in Gaza. Though as Israel plans a ground invasion of northern Gaza, a statement by US President Joe Biden has highlighted the distinction between Palestinian citizens and Hamas leaders, saying that most Palestinians had quote-unquote nothing to do with the October 7 attack on Israel. So even as US supports Israel, it's been made clear that no American troops will participate in the operation. Israel's bombardment of Gaza in response to the attack by militant group Hamas last week has drawn criticism from several quarters across the world who have also accused it of violating international laws among the detractors also of Israel's move include some of the Jews who have accused the country of committing war crimes and attempting genocide. मौजूद है गाजा और इजराइल के बॉर्डर पे एक तरफ से इजराइल तोप से गोले दाग रहा है तो दूसरी तरफ तैयारी भी कर रहा है ये टैंक आप देख सकते हैं During the night there were rockets fired at Tel Aviv and southern Israel and there was still there is still combat in and around in the northern part of the Gaza strip and the IDF continues to operate about the Gaza Strip and to attack different military targets belonging to Hamas. Let me take this across to my guests who join me on the broadcast this evening. Prabhu Dayal, who's a former diplomat, is with us. Also with us is Dave uh, Shantin, who's an activist and resident from Tel Aviv in Israel. Also joining us is Irina Sokerman, who's a national security and lawyer and geopolitical analyst and also president of Scrab Rising INC, a strategic advisory. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me on this important debate that we must have as the escalation by Israel also continues and also there is a huge humanitarian crisis that is looming large on Gaza and Israel. I'd like to first begin with Irina. Irina, what do you have to say about the current on-ground invasion that uh, Israel now has launched? Now they are going to retaliate and the, the, the tanks, the weapons, everything have lined up around the Gaza border even as more than 1.1 million people have been dislocated from their houses, all the Gazans who are moving out of the North Gaza territory to safer zones. I wonder what that is. Well, it's, it has now been uh, exactly a week, uh, over a week now since the launch of the actual terrorist attack against Israel the, and the start of the war. Uh, the fact that Israel has given that much time for Gaza residents to prepare and to evacuate from the offensive is unprecedented. Mm. No other country would have waited so long and taken so much care to avoid civilian casualties as Israel. Now, anything that happens 
Any civilians that come to harm will be entirely on Hamas, which actively sought to prevent them from uh, leaving. Israel took extra mm. days that are costing it in military operational preparedness and in a uh, inability to capture the or mm. kill the terrorists quickly in order to avoid those uh, human casualties. But by contrast, what has Hamas done? It has continued to occupy civilian buildings, which is why this operation mm. is necessary to begin with. It has failed to release any hostages and instead boasted uh, of, uh, of killing them. It has uh, gone around the world encouraging further violence against Jews, Israelis and anyone else who gets in the way. Mm. And the international community has failed to launch any pressure either against Hamas or against countries that uh, have been helping Hamas, they have instead focused their attention on Israel's self-defense. Hmm. I assure you that had any of these countries been invaded and had any um, of the uh, citizens been murdered in such a brutal uh, manner and had any organization left the mark of ISIS after afterwards, the conversation we would be having would be entirely different. Let's recall that Hamas left an ISIS uh, in Sydney, uh, at one of the locations of its brutal terrorist attacks, ISIS is considered a genocidal terrorist group that has uh, committed uh, intentional genocide against Yazidis. Israel's uh, Ham Hamas leaving that sign means that it had the same intention, genocidal intention against Israel, and and only circumstances and lack of uh, sufficient resources preventing it from uh, uh, from accomplishing. I really want to understand this. You were saying had this conflict really erupted in any other place, we would have had a different conversation than what we are having right now. Here we are talking about an age-old conflict. This conflict goes back for more than 70 years between Israel and Palestine. Now there is, of course, a militant group that is backed by Palestine and some members uh, you know, from the Palestinian population, might I reiterate, this has committed crimes on Israelis because of which we are seeing this escalation. Nobody is going on to support what the Hamas has ended up committing. But what Israel's counteroffensive is doing to those 2.5 million people who reside within that narrow stretch, the Gaza Strip, what happens to those people? Two wrongs cannot make a right. Well, the only right in this case is self-defense and hopefully dislodging Hamas so it could not hold these people. Where are the hostage? numbers of about dislodging Hamas? I really want to understand, out of attacking Gaza, how many Hamas operatives have been, in fact, neutralized by the IDF? Are there numbers which are out there in the open that have, in fact, been put out by Israeli authorities? Uh, Israel has put out that approximately 15 to 1600 uh, terrorists. You're talking about approximately. I want numbers, ma'am. Uh, we overall. only that know. There has not been an exact uh, number. I, uh, no, no. I only would like to understand there has been one operative who, which has been named by Israel. They are saying he was responsible for, in fact, launching this open attack on Israel on the 7th of October. He has been killed neutralized by the IDF. That's it. Otherwise, where are the numbers that have claimed that there are so many Israel uh, Hamas's operatives that have been neutralized by the IDF and civilians are not targeting for no reason, being targeted for no reason? There are no Hamas operatives who have been named. Hmm. But okay. Israel has operational reasons for not naming every operative that it kills specifically to in order to disrupt the further operations by these operatives okay. it is a it is a military posture not to disclose all the information in order in order not to help the enemy okay let me actually ask this to dave uh, shatiheen who is also with us on the broadcast dave how do you respond yeah. to the kind of uh, military escalation that is currently happening in israel even as there have been fresh statements that have now been released by people, especially world powers like the United States of America, who have supported and will continue to support Israel. They have now come out with statements like US President Joe Biden has just said that there needs to be an exercising of caution. Hamas is not akin to Palestinians. They are, these are two different sets of people we're talking about. We're talking about a militant organization that has found its base in Palestine, but uh, genuinely all the Palestinians are not one with the Hamas idea. So 
calling in for a humanitarian crisis is something that is not called for. That is what the word from U.S. is now coming. How do you see Israel responding to it? Look, you, you, you keep uh, talking about politics, about conquering, about everything. The, the point is, eventually, we are handling a terror attack. The, mm. This is the point. This is no games. If ISIS were eliminated within five or six years, so this is the time that Hamas will be eliminated. I think this time, after all the, how can you call it, I don't know, rounds of, um, of missiles, of terrorism in Israel, I think this is the time when the world needs to be with us because we are doing the world a big favor by losing our soldiers, our people. And I think this is the last time that we're going to do this broadcast because I think this is this time that the world needs to open its eyes like United States, like India, like a lot of different countries in Europe mm. and they understand that we are doing them a big favor by e executing our people. Over 1,300 people murdered in, in a very, very bad, bad way. You know it, I don't even need to, to tell you how. And I think this time, leave the politics away. Hamas is a terror organization. I know there are many good people in Gaza many good Palestinians, many good Muslims, but it won't matter until we don't destroy Hamas. That's it. That's all I can tell you. Dave, I, you know, you are an activist and I really want to understand, you have cited a number, 1300. They, these are the civilians in Israel uh, who have officially, the numbers uh, that have been cited by Israeli authorities who have been killed by Hamas. The number can be more. There are 289 soldiers who have also died in the conflict. And, of course, yeah. the world is one with that idea that nothing just justifies any act of terrorism. But what about the 2,300 who have been killed in Gaza because of the airstrike? Listen, again, uh, Hamas is using the people who live there as a human shield. It's not a secret. It's something we know by centuries. The first uh, strike that Israel did, the IDF did on Gaza, they said that they have bombed an enclosure, supposedly a college area, a campus, which was a, a hideout of Hamas militants. What happens to the information that's coming out of there? None so far, because all we see is killing of children. 724 children have been killed so far in Gaza alone. Because this is a population, okay. remember, Dave, which is comprising of more than 2.3 million people. Half of the population comprises of children alone. Listen, uh, again, uh, when you look at Gaza and you see the population, it's very minimized. It means they're like in a box of sardines, you know, it's very, very close to each other. So when they use uh, rockets from hospitals or mm. from schools, uh, the IDF cannot really control, you know, with all the information we have, we cannot really control who do we uh, airstrike in this. Uh, so you're what calling you them collateral damage? You're calling the 724 children collateral damage? Is that right? No. No. I'm just saying that Hamas is using those children and civilians as human shields. How many That's people what... do you claim Hamas is using? Out of the 2.3 million people, how many Hamas operatives really do you think are you know, using this entire population as human shield? Isn't that a, a mathematically skewed argument? I said, I think there are a lot, more than 50% in Gaza mm. of the population that are good people who wants to live in peace. Mm. I have a lot of Arab and Muslim friends here in Jaffa, in Tel Aviv, Jaffa. Uh, we live together in peace, in harmony. Everything is okay. Hmm. But there, you have a terror a regime that just takes the, the humanity away from these children, these people, civilians who want to live in peace. So I say this time, the world needs to understand, hmm. this time, Hamas, worse than ISIS, needs to be deleted. And then I promise you, Gaza will live in peace with Israelis and everything will be okay.
That's it. That's what I what I Give can tell you. Give at the rate at which, at which the Israeli military is going, there will be no Palestinians left in Gaza to live in peace. Prabhu Dayal, what do you have to say about this on ground offensive? And after nine days, when it is coming now, after the airstrikes on this thin strip of land which belongs to Gazans, the only one remaining, other than the occupied West Bank. I'd really like to understand if at all there was a culling out of Hamas militants from Gaza, why was this on-ground offensive not done before? After all, Israeli milita uh, military is one that boasts of, uh, you know, so much when it is about intelligence, might, and of course, the brawn. Why wasn't it done before? Why the air raids first? Well, Griha, you have asked a very good question. And my response is that the aerial attack was necessary for strategic reasons. Hmm. Look, let me preface my remarks by saying that terrorism cannot be justified under any circumstances. Hmm. So I condemn the terrorist attack by the Hamas militants who invaded Israel hmm. on 7th October. Yes. Now, what they did after the attack was they took a lot of Israelis as hostages. And naturally, hmm. Israel is duty bound to try and rescue the hostages. And for doing that, it will have to launch a frontal attack on Gaza. This is something that Hamas knew. Hamas therefore betrayed the Palestinians. Hamas became responsible for the sufferings which were bound to ensue for the Palestinians. Let me explain. Uh, Gaza is very densely populated. When the hostages were inside Gaza, it became very difficult for the Israelis to locate exactly where they are. Secondly, Gaza has a very big system of underground tunnels. Hmm. And Hamas could move the hostages from one place to the other without people coming to know. Despite the very best of intelligence available, electronic intelligence, it becomes difficult when there is such a network of tunnels to pinpoint where hmm. the hostages are being kept. So Hamas thought it was being too clever, but it was being too clever by half because naturally, if the Israelis were not finding it easy to rescue the hostages, and I repeat, they were duty bound to rescue the hostages. And if this was proving difficult, they had to launch an all out aerial attack. So but that- Mr. But Mr. Dayal, uh, with yes. the hostages still in place in Gaza, as per the intel yes. that's been re received uh, by yes. Israel, bombing that entire area, a narrow strip of land that we have been talking about, with buildings so close to one another, like Dave was also pointing out, that one building gets impacted, the other one obviously gets impacted. Don't you think it was a huge risk? Because here we're talking about Israeli nationals who've been held hostage, also American nationals, also many of them from various other nationalities, as per the intel. What happens to those people? How strategic can an air strike actually be? Griha, this is not something that you and I can decide. This is what Hamas should have taken into account. Hmm. It knew that the collateral damage, as you called it, would be colossal. Hmm. Because how could Israel allow Hamas to hold its citizens hostage. Hmm. It had to go all out. It had to go all out in terms of an aerial attack and now in terms of a ground attack. It, it became strategically necessary, I'm sure, hmm. to bomb and make sure that as many civilians were evacuated from Gaza, that they left and went to the designated safe areas, which are the southern part of Gaza, so that the assault could go on and the effort to rescue the hostages could have uh, could be now taking place. I repeat, the responsibility lies squarely on Hamas, and I do not blame 
the Israelis for doing what they are doing. Mr. Dayal, I'd still ask you this counter question. When you say that the responsibility lies with Hamas, we've seen what the Hamas was capable of inflicting upon Israelis, how they are uh, really somebody uh, with a lot of malice. They are not leaving any stone unturned to go ahead and do what they have managed to do. The evidences are very are pretty much out there and Israel has put out those evidences after this on-ground escalation has started, this counter-offensive has started. How do you think that responsibility and that onus was, was bound to be respected by Hamas? After all, they have taken the hostages in order to kill. Because if that is what the narrative is, that they want to actually eliminate all the Jews from, from, from Earth, how do you think that that justification or that onus can be given to Hamas? It, sh it should be given to a military force, which of course should be acting with a lot of responsibility. Because here, and I again and again talk about this humanitarian crisis, when the IDF is warning citizens in North Gaza, in Gaza City, to come from the northern part of the Gaza Strip to south, because they are attempting to either bomb it or evacuate it or launch this on-ground operation, how on earth are they supposed to do it? We're talking about 1.1 million people. Even the United Nations has called this very, very catastrophic. But and that the window that has been given is three hours. It's, it's by the clock. All right. But don't you think that Hamas should have factored this in before it launched the terrorist attack? Look, Terrorist outfits from Pakistan wage acts against us. They carry out terrorist activities against us. Do they factor in how much damage they would be if India does a counterattack? Because ultimately, their objective, the objective of the terrorists is only to inflict damage. That's and exactly what, what I'm saying, Mr. Dama, uh, Mr. Mr. Dayal. Don't you yes. think that in order to not really calculate and not really you know put Hamas one with the rest of the Palestinians the civilians who are living at least that demarcation needs to be drawn first that Palestinians are separate Hamas as a militant organization is separate so you know asking for any sort of an action from Hamas and then inflicting pain on Palestinians are two different things and that's why you see even Jews from all across the world it's happening in New York City it's happening in London America UK everywhere there are protests and Jews are part of those protests and they are saying, please don't indulge in any kind of genocide at our cost. Why do you think the protests are happening? No, no I'm afraid that this information is not really correct. The protests are out there. They have no, been, the in fact, the protests are, are pretty much place. happening. It's happening the in London. It is happening in New York. We have, we've got those information. What is incorrect about that, Mr. Dayan? Okay, now, Griha. Let me once again come back to the ground situation. Yes. Hamas is not at one place where it can be targeted and the rest of the Palestinian population uh, left alone. Mm. Hamas has intermingled in Gaza with the civilians. It is hiding in hospitals. It is hiding in mosques. It is hiding in apartment buildings. So how do you take out Hamas? How many, how many out of the 2.3 million people? Beg, how, beg many, how many out of the 2.3 million people? Just a wild guess, sir. No, but hold on. It is not how many. It is how much they are interspersed with the rest of the population. But the why, villain, why should we not talk about how Reha, many? I beg your pardon. The villain in this entire spectacle is Hamas. And you are trying to defend Hamas, which is really... Absolutely not. Absolutely it not. Is. I just told you about how Hamas militants need to be kept away from how we are looking at the rest of the Palestinians. And but this is what has be been underlined away? by not just me on this broadcast, by many of the world leaders who now begin to speak about it. Now that United Nations is also talking about the humanitarian crisis, which is very unfortunate after 2300 people have already been killed in Gaza. And like I said, 724 are children. Most of the visuals disturbing to the hell is coming out of Gaza. All of those visuals are of children dead. That is also something on. that we need to speak about. All right.
I okay. I would come back to I I I would come back point. to you because I think it's only me and you right the, right now. They no, wanted okay. to come but in I just want on to the protest. Yes, you can make that point. They wanted to come in on the protests that are happening all across the world, not yeah. just in Israel, on Jews also protesting against this air raid that Israel has lodged on Gaza. Dave, please come in. Listen, first of all, we're not handling only Hamas on the south currently. Hmm. We're handling Hezbollah from the north. Yeah. I don't know if you're updated, but basically in the past uh, three hours, hmm. they launched and killed few of our citizens. By, hmm. by the way, Arab citizens, if you don't know, but just saying. So now we have two fronts. We have one terrorism and another terrorism, one from the south, one from the north. So hmm. basically, I don't understand why you keep talking about uh, us, like we're doing something bad. We cannot neutralize the entire population of Gaza. Obviously, there are many people, good people there. We tell them to go out from the areas that we're going to attack, by the way. Hmm. The fact is, Hamas won't let them go out. You can see it everywhere in the news. It's not something new. Hmm. Hamas is prohibiting them to you go mean that's out. That's the word so, that's coming out of the Israeli authorities that Hamas is blocking the evacuation of the Gazans from out of Gaza. Where is Israel allowing them to go? Into Egypt, not to Israel. Egypt, you have a pass there. Never mind. We are telling them. Hmm. They know it. Hmm. I don't know what videos you see, but hmm. we are even sending them like uh, fly cards by planes hmm. just to evacuate. Okay. Because we have intelligence that some terrorists are in the location where they are. So we want to save the innocent, like you said, 700 children or whatever okay. you said. Urging but we all... citizens in Gaza to be evacuated safely. That is what the Israeli authorities are choosing to do. Whether or not that is effective, whether or not that happens is something that we'd have to wait and watch. Unfortunately, even as this crisis unfolds, I'd have to wrap the show on that note, I would like to thank all my guests for joining me on the broadcast. And this is where it stands. The Hamas-Israel conflict, where the collateral damage becomes the Palestinians. What happens to those 2.5 million people, half of which are children, is something that the world is seeing, watching and talking about war crimes only now and the humanitarian crisis only now. We leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching.